Hi there and welcome to this lesson on trigonometric equations. Okay, so we already have a basic idea of what equations is and an example would be something like this 3x minus 2 is equal to 4 and the idea of an equation is simply to find a value for the unknown so that left hand side is equal to right hand side, isn't it? Okay, so for example if I substituted 2 in here well let's start with 1. If I substitute 1, 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 equals 1 okay and that's not what I want I want 4 3 times 2 is 6 minus 2 is 4 okay so the answer or the solution to this equation is x is equal to 2 if I try 3 or 4 or any other number I will get that the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side but then we encounter some interesting equations like we get the equation x squared is equal to 9 and this time we ask the question, well, what value must I square, in other words, to get 9? And you immediately answer, well, that's easy, 3. 3 squared is 9. So if I replace x with 3, then I get 3 squared and 9. But 3 is not the only solution. Okay? Actually, there's another solution. Can you guess it? Well, hopefully you did not guess it. Hopefully you can calculate it very quickly so that it seems like you're guessing. The other answer is negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 9. Okay, so that's another solution. This equation has two solutions. Okay, in other words, there's two values that I can replace so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, now a trigonometric equation is not much different. The idea is still the same. If I have an equation like this, sine of x is equal to a half, all I want to know is what value must I substitute for x in order that the left-hand side would be equal to the right-hand side. And you would say, oh, I recognize this. I know that sine of 30 degrees would equal a half. Okay, in other words, if I have my cast diagram and I've got a 30 degree angle, and that's a little bit, I've got a 30 degree angle here, then, and this is 2, then that will be 1 comma square root, no, square root 3 comma 1, square root 3 comma 1, there we go, that's 30 degrees, and there's my triangle, Okay, then you know, okay, if I represent this angle 30 degrees on the Cartesian plane and I take my opposite and my hypotenuse, divide the two, then I get a half. So, sine of 30 degrees, x is equal to 30 degrees. That's one of the solutions. Okay, now I just want to show you something very interesting. Another solution would be going right around. In other words, at 30 degrees, add another 360 degrees, a uh, full rotation then we get that this angle is now 390 degrees and 390 degrees is exactly the same triangle so another solution is 390 degrees that's if I added 360 what if I, if I subtracted 360 so start there subtract 360 and where do we get to well this time we get to negative 33 degrees, 330 I mean, 330 degrees, and then I'm back at the same place again, so do you see we have another solution, we have x is equal to negative 330 degrees, that's another solution, okay, and actually, to be honest with you, if I'm going to add another, add at 390, if I add another 360, I get to 750 degrees. That will be a solution. If I'm here and I subtract another 360, that will be what? Seven, nine, uh, 690 degrees. Negative. 690 degrees. That will be another solution. And to be honest, for every multiple of 360 that I add, I'll get to another solution because I'll just be adding a full rotation each time. So that my solution here is not just x is equal to 30 degrees, but it's actually x is equal to 30 degrees plus 360 times k. 
where k is some integer. Okay, so you can what? That's not a solution. Well, actually it is. It's called the general solution. Okay, it's called the general solution. Okay, and uh, just to explain it a little bit, there's our 30 degrees. That's our first quadrant uh, solution. Okay, so to get a half, sine of 30 degrees will work. Okay, but then for every 360 degrees that I add, I'll get another solution. So that's where the k comes in, because k is now some integer. It's either 0, then I get plus 360 times 0 is just 0, so then I get 30 degrees, that solution. Or it can be equal to positive 1, so then I have plus 1 uh, of the 360s, that would give me to that one. Or it can be negative 1. Negative 1 is also an integer, so it can be 1, negative 1. If it's negative 1, then I'm subtracting 360 once, and I'll get that answer. Or it can be 2, okay, and then I'm adding 360 twice. In other words, I'm adding 7 20, which gives me that solution, or it can be negative 2, and I hope you are seeing where I'm going with this. Okay, if it's negative 2, I'm subtracting 360 twice, and then I'll get that negative 690. Okay, so that is what this part means. And this 360 that we add is called the period. The period. So the period is the distance between solutions. Okay, distance between um, uh, well, let's call it corresponding solutions. Corresponding solutions. Okay, so in other words, that 390 corresponds to the angle 330 and when we talk about period and later we get to the graphs, you'll also see where, where this fits into the graphs as well. Okay, so that is unfortunately not the only general solution. Because we also know that in the second quadrant, sine is also positive. So if I draw a triangle here with a 30 degrees, and I work out sine of 30 degrees, and I draw triangle in the second quadrant, also with a 30 degrees on the x-axis, then this is 150 degrees, 180 minus 30, and sine of 50, 150 degrees will also give me a half, okay, which means that is another solution. Okay, so in other words, the general solution here continues in that 150 degrees is also a solution and the same thing applies for every 360 that I add I'll get back to that so plus 360 degrees times K and everything works the same in terms of adding this period where K is an element of integers okay so there's two parts to the solution of any trigonometric equation and those two parts correspond to the first quadrant and the other quadrant where it is positive or that was also assuming that we were working with positive a positive constant sine of 30 degrees equal or sine of x was equal to a positive value so that this angle had to have been a first quadrant angle 30 degrees or a second quadrant angle 150 degrees because sine of that angle gives me a positive a half now, the 150 we could find very easily. Okay? The 150 was just 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. Okay? So here we see the 30 degrees is used again to find the second part of the general solution as well. Okay? So this 30 degrees and the first 30 degrees seems to be very important and that is called the reference angle. Okay, this is called the reference angle. Okay, and we find the reference angle using inverse trig functions. Using the inverse trig functions, or your knowledge of uh, special angles. That's how I, I use, how I found the 30 degrees. Okay, using my knowledge of special angles. But let's summarize what we know so far. Well, 
the first thing you're going to have to do in order to solve trigonometric equations is to get a single trig ratio equal to a constant. Okay. The second part we need to find the reference angle. Okay, and you may use your inverse functions. Okay, and the calculator will be helpful with that. And the third part would be to let your input equal to okay and then either it's equal to your reference angle plus 360 degrees times k or it's going to be equal to your reference angle um, or actually not uh, it's going to be equal to 180 degrees minus your reference angle if you were working with sine okay or it might be a hundred and 80 degrees plus your reference angle if you were working with tan. And notice how I'm using my cost diagram. C A S T. For sine we use 180 degrees minus. For tan 180 degrees plus. What do you think we're going to use for cos? Okay. It can be 360 degrees minus your reference angle. Okay or I prefer it actually if you use negative reference angle. In other words, I just took away one 360 degrees. So negative is just in that direction. So this is what I'll use for cos and for any of them I will again have to just add my period plus 360 degrees times k where k is an element of integers. Okay, well let's see how that is done. Okay, the fourth, this one fourth problem is solve the unknown. Okay, so solve the unknown. Okay, and what I mean by that is, for example, in my input might have been something like sine of 2 beta plus 10 degrees is equal to 0 comma 7. Okay, then you'll still have to solve beta in your last step after you've done this part. Okay, but we'll look at a few examples later on. For now, let's just look at one more example where I go through these steps. So, let's imagine we have our cos. Okay, let's say we have 4 cos theta minus 1 is equal to... Th uh, let's make it okay then my first step would be to solve to get my trig ratio on its own to get a single trig ratio equal to a constant so I add a 1 on both sides to get rid of the minus 1 and then after that I'll divide with 4 on both sides so that in my first step I will have that cos of theta is equal to 3 over 4 I'm rushing it a bit for time's sake okay so next is to find my reference angle Okay, my reference angle is, let's use our calculator, okay, we need inverse, so my reference angle is equal to the inverse of cos of 3 over 4, which gives me, what do I get, uh, 3 over 4 inverse cos 3 over 4 equals inverse cos, we get 41.41. Okay, so we get 41,41 degrees. And now my general solution, my general solution is um, my input, which is just theta, equal to 41,41, my reference angle, plus 360 degrees times k, or the other part where cos is negative. Cos is negative in the fourth quadrant, where I'm using negative angles, it's less than 90 degrees, okay, so that would be negative 41 comma 41 plus 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer.